This is the cooking preacher back at you all again. Listen, I'm here in my facility, what I call my little area where I cook. Very beautiful area where I'm preparing some food for my friends, all right? I want to kind of pan the camera so you can see where I am. This is where I am at, right here. In this facility here, this is one of our fellowships that we have for our people, for the Daughters of Zion. But this is where we fellowship at time. It's a very comfortable area, it's beautiful. And I do all of my cooking here. We built this uh, for a insignificant amount of money. Uh, you developing communities, you're gonna need skill set. And so men must be trained in brick masonry, plumbing and welding. Those are skill sets you're really going to need. I am one that build, I am one of the brick masons, and I work and I build here. So I'm here in the, uh, the fellowship hall here. We fellowship, we can stay warm, but because I'm here cooking, I have no heat on. This is my area here. I'm cooking today. I'm prepping. Let me show you, first of all, what I'm prepping for my friends. We have friends here. Our Zarkane, the this is our, you see those buildings back there? That's going to be our Suka village for fellowship. These are, I've already prepped these here. This is here, uh, uh, these are mushrooms and parsley and scallions, uh, onions, uh, garlic. And I'm going to prepare this for our friends here. This here is age uh, steak here. This is the age right here. This is the Angus beef. And I would say to you, if you're going to eat things like this, it's best to pay a little money for it. I will go to those sections of the town that I'm in where the Caucasians shop, especially the Jews and what they call themselves Jews. But this steak right here, this one here, let me show you. This one here, this is an age steak that I age for about five weeks. And I age the meat here for our friends. And look in this pan right here. You see this pan here? I have some aging in here. All right, I'm not as equipped as our young man on dealing with the camera and things. So this is nothing but salt, kosher salt. And I put the steaks, you can put the whole steak roll, uh, roll on here and let it age. You can let it age two, three months and it tenderize it even the greatest. So I have friends here that I'm going to cook for them today. I told them our Ak, Daniel Yoel, his wife there uh, from uh, Florida. He is a music teacher. His wife is one of the teachers in the school, very beautiful family and with their three lovely, beautiful children. And then we have our precious friend, Zahain Yaho from Texas. He is an IT professional. And so we're here, and I love when my friends come just to cook. But I want to talk to us a little bit too while I cook. Here I am again. I'm here manning the camera by myself, and I'm going to be cooking, and I'm going to show you how I do it, all right? So you'll have to forgive the preacher uh, he doesn't do this, but I want to, this teaching, not only am I cooking, but it is to address the in words. You find this delusional hyperbole that men say it's all right to use that word to identify the people of my hue. They use the B words uh, to identify women that looks that look like their mothers. How ironic that is. They call them every kind of vile name there is. They're ignorant, they don't know the things that youth supposedly know, and they simply defy the women and speak with such disregard. It is an abomination before Yah. The people, is, people are not even messing with them. Walking down the street, they will say, look at that whore. Well then what would someone say to your mother? And she was dressed like that in her ignorance. If one is unlearned about matters, they don't know. 
I'm going to deal with that, but I'm going to cook, all right? Let me retrieve, don't go anywhere, let me retrieve my frying pan. Ah, this is the mustard here. This is what I'm going to cook these steaks in, all right? I want to get this ready to go, all right? Let me get this ready. I'm working the camera by myself, so I'm going to clean this up. Hallelujah. And I'm going to begin cooking. I love to cook for my friends. I've always loved to cook, and I love doing it. I just simply enjoy doing it. I love to cook. And I've got some things that I'm going to be cooking I will share with you. They're not my original recipes. There is no such thing as an original. You simply just add spices and depths of flavors and things like that. But I love doing this for the people of Yah. I love to cook and prepare food for Yah's nation. That's why our tabernacles are so beautiful. I cook everything from lamb's meat to goat's meat. And we can harvest that right from our community. And so I'm preparing to cook and we're going to deal with that inward. It's a vile, reprehensible word. And these are men that call each other that and they say they love them. They're liars. They're full of their own twisted, damnable deceit. I'm going to bring this closer, but let me get this started. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to use here and some wonderful virgin or olive oil. I'm going to cook with this. I'm not skilled with this camera, so I'm going to move it a little closer. And I'm not going to film everything. I want you to see how I prepare things. So uh, I'm going to use some of this virgin olive oil here in the pan. Yes, I'm preparing to do the steaks. And not only am I going to, I'm going to use that, I like the grass-fed butter, but this will work, this pure Irish butter. This is what will do the job. I will show you how I do it. You do it any way you want to. But this is not the essence of this uh, gathering with you all today. It is, to, it is to defy the corruptness of this word that they call the N-word. I detest it. I detest that word. And so I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that for a while. We're going to talk about that. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to cook. Hallelujah. We have those that are here that I will be cooking steak for, that they cannot utilize the sodium. So what I will do, what I like to do, mm, I like to add or utilize uh, Himalayan salts. I use the Himalayan. All right. And then I use the crushed pepper. And I'll show you what I'll do with these steaks. The crushed pepper and the Himalayan salts. My salt and my pepper shaker. Now I'll show you what I'll do. Let's move this back. I've had these out all morning to get them at room temperature, okay? And this is what I will do. I will, sim I will simply put the Himalayan salt and the crushed pepper on these. You see that? That's what I'm doing. Ah, this is going to be beautiful. I love doing this for y'all's people. I love for people to visit, but don't come here with your bogus bull. I'm not going to have it. We're not going to allow it. You're not coming here to tell us anything. This is the only community I know of in America. That deals with the true name of Yah, his son, Yoshua Kamashia, that we're striving to meet the criteria of Torah and trying to love each other. It's difficult for us as a people. We don't know how to love. Let me move this off for a minute. I don't want it too hot. It's difficult for us to know how to love each other. We don't know how to. So I'm seasoning the steaks with a little Himalayan salt and a little crushed black pepper. That's what I'm doing here. You see that? A little Himalayan salt and a little crushed black pepper. Uh, 
what happened to my soap. He doesn't want to go. Battery is probably dead. Let me finish this with the peppers. Then I'll put some salt on them. I'm going to do these steaks. That's a steak right there. You see that? Ah, oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? We're going to deal with the new, the, the inward, the contents of it. What it implies, its original form, where it came from. We're not going to deal with the delusion of lies that they tell us, these juvenile, immature individuals, and they call each other that, that this is a word that represents the people of our hue in this nation. It's a false lie. How do you have a lots and derivative huh, to represent the people of Yisraya, eh, they're liars. And they can say it is somewhat of a kinsmanship nature, that's a lie. You don't call someone that. You don't call them that word and say there is uh, an acceptance of them. You call them that because you detest them, you despise them. So I'm going to cook and teach. And it is a firm rebuke to us as a nation. You will get offended because I use the word damn. You will get offended. Yet you will call each other's guys. What a violent word to call a man's wife. A guy? Don't come here with your guy talk. You don't call my issue a guy. And you're certainly not going to come here and call no one that. The N word. I'm going to break it down for us. Let me get this. Fixed up because we're going to be eating here after a while. And then we're going to have a beautiful fellowship tonight. Roasting, roasting uh, marshmallows for the children. And the Akim will sit around and fellowship the daughters of Zion. That's what we're going to do. But I want to begin the process of cooking this. All right, look like I want to begin this a little bit. I'm going to put my frying pan back here. And with this methodology of cooking, I can put about four or five steaks in this huge pan. I just want to get them seared and brown, and I'll show you what I will do. I will show you what I will do once I get that. All right? So what I will do, my friends, look at this. Let me get them in first. And I will show you, all right? Ah, uh, these are some monstrophicus of beauty. My, 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 my. Let me move the camera over some. You see what I'm doing here? Ah, I got the steaks in this huge pan. And I want them to sear on each side. And then I will begin to warm my oven. All right, I will put this on uh -uh, around 200. 75, 200, 250. 250 degrees. 250, all right. Then I get that warm. You'll see what I will do, all right? These are huge mamas here. These are huge steaks. These are beautiful. And I, this is how I cook. There's one thing that if you experience that sure, you will have wonderful food to eat. Uh, we, we, we do love the beautiful foods. I don't want to eat trash. And so we don't eat that kind of trashy stuff here. Beautiful eating. Look at that. I want you to see that. And while you're looking at that for a moment, I'm going to deal with that in words, all right? We're going to see the effects of it, how it has affected our lives, how it has caused such calamity within the community of the people of my view. And that's just the truth. Let me deal somewhat with that word. What does it imply? What is the meaning of that? And what has reduced us to that level of thinking that we will call an ach, we say that that's my ach, we will call someone uh, that divisive term and use that. And you will denigrate the women that look like your mother. You are an ignorant individual. 
and speak of them as though they're their man, even animals. You don't even say the word properly from the Latin dialogue because if you did, you would know it doesn't imply what you want to make it mean. I can see if you use the word shahor in the Hebrew language, that means black. But I will show you what the N word, its, its origin, its originality, its euphemism, what it implies. You're talking about someone that is ignorant. Well, we're all ignorant. Can you build a house so you're ignorant to that degree? Can you do plumbing? Can you do the work of IT professional? Can you design a system? Can you do the aerodynamics of mathematics uh, to make a plane fly? So I am an ignorant man, so are you. What is your skill set? Well, what can you do? Well, I can build a house. I can build my own house. I can do the plumbing. I can do the electrical work. I can do all of that. So when someone is unlearned about a matter, that doesn't make that individual an ignoramus that they have no sense of direction. Ah, oh, we're going to cook this. I want to show you how beautiful these cakes are going to look. When I get them to a certain, I'll show you what I will do. Let me get back to the end words. Let me get back to that. This is a word, even in its euphemism, it has uh, one of the most inflammatory type of definitives. It is one that you actually express that you are so unpleasant that I despise you. You tell me he's your Hebrew brother? And you despise him? I thought you hated Esau, the cracker man. That's what you call Esau. There's nowhere in text in Torah that it tells us that. Nowhere. It's not in the book. You can say what you want to. You have twisted Torah to apply to your dogma, but that's just not the truth. It is one of the most offensive inflammatory words that is created by man. And so you hear these men saying, well, what will we call the N-word? It means you're black. It is not that. You don't even say it right. It is not in the Latin expression, nega, nech, n-e-e-g-e-r, nega, nega, nega. It emphasizes the color of a thing. It is a nega, just like uh, uh, it is spoken in Spanish. But that doesn't imply a derogative uh, word and an application that reduces one less than a human being. And that's what you're saying to those that you call them your brothers. You call them Hebrew Israelites. That's a lie. That's a lie. You want to stand before Yah with that violent reproach against if they are his people, if they are the elect of Yah, why would you dehumanize them to that degree? Let me go a little further here. Uh, what the word means. I want to read the scripture that they always use to say that it is, it is proper to use this in word and to identify the people of Yah that degree. Look, look at this thing. Let me get back to this. See how brown and beautiful they are? Let me get this right. I'm not well suited for this. You see those things? Isn't that beautiful? Look at the charred brownness to it. That's what the beautiful butter and virgin olive oil will do. Let me show you one. See how that is? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful steak? Aren't they beautiful? That is so beautiful. My, my. I want the people to enjoy that. All right. Oh, they're so tender as well. I can feel it. The people usually like their steaks well done. And so I'm going to do that. I will, I, will, I will get them properly charred and everything. And then I will get them, I will put them in the oven. I want you to see the fullness of me. Do you see me better? I don't want to back too far though. So I'm going to cook for a while, my friend. Hallelujah. So this N word 
It's only used of that word in, in any capacity. It is used in what we call uh, the missing Torah, the missing books of Sefer of HaTorah. First of all, I want to read directly from history. He said the words that in words was first included in the in the Merriam Webster Dictionary in 1864. At the time, it was defined. I see the words. It was defined as the same, or, or it was a synonym of the words Negro. So you call them Negro or anything like that. It is offensive to a people. With a note that indicated that it was used, it is a noun that expressed derision, someone to laugh at, something that is insulting. So that's how you feel about the people of your year. Because they are unlearned, that's all right. They're ignorant. I am ignorant, man. I am ignorant. We all are ignorant. We have a disposition of ignorance. We don't know everything. You don't know everything in the book, my friend. So it is to criticize or to express disapproval or of something or someone. That's how the word is defined. And that's how that demented mentality of the Caucasians, they said that they are nothing less than inhuman. And that's what you say. That's how you speak to one that has endured such criticism of every nation that have been ostracized, that they have been marginalized, dehumanized, and this is the superlative you use and you think you are smart and this is how you identify them? That's ignorance, man. Has nothing to do with you. And you reproach the women You say all kinds of things to them, it's evil, and it is wrong. There has never been a definition like an ignorant person, that's what it means. An ignorant person for this word is subsequently in the dictionary published by this company. That, that means that they are void of any kind of comprehension, they can never learn. They're depleted and devoid of, of those skill sets and that kind of mentality whereby you can teach them. They have no ability to receive instructions. And don't forget that you were that way one day too. That's what you reproach them with. And you have no, you have no conscience of cognitive intuition that you would even consider that people. And if you intrigue them right, they will hear you. If they don't, you will at least speak their minds to be inquisitive. If they see the reason of the tick ball that you have, quote the hope, then they will inquire of you. You will gather on every corner. I don't know. I can't speak it for absolute. Show me a group of the Hebrew Israelites, and this is not a, an attack on them. Show me one group that owns one apartment building in New York. A one group that owns, owns a, a, a complex in Philly. Or a complex in Atlanta, Georgia. Or Dallas, Texas. Please show me. That, ha that has a community like this. This is a beautiful community. Where they train the men for skill set. To be able to operate within the communal context. Let me say this to you all. If any of you all start a community, I want to say this. The first thing I would build there is a large barn, about 100, 120 foot long. I would build it that by 24 foot wide. You can get by in any kind of district thing or any kind of building code, you can build a barn. You can do a, a one with two stories. You, you can concrete it in segments. You can utilize the whole building, but it will have the attributes of a barn. You can create little apartments in a room up top, so you can move families there, and they can be down to work. And you will take the funds uh, to subsidize them. That's a fact. I will go a little further. I want to teach on that N word. 
I want you to see me do these first ones, all right? Ah, uh, look at that. That is beautiful. I tell you, the people are going to enjoy these. Look at that. One more time. The next cook and I have someone doing the camera for me. Look at that. Look at that. Look at those steaks. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. And I have here my plant in this pan, everything that is prepped. The onions and the mushrooms and the scallions, the garlic. Isn't that beautiful? That is simply gorgeous. The buttery taste, and I'll show you how I do this for the people. I have a brother here, that one there, he can eat there by himself. I believe he's going to be slumpy. All right? Now let me get back to this teaching, all right? I want to get back to that. Look at those steaks. Now, don't call me and say, Ray, I can come and do me a steak. I'm not going to do that. You'll eat well here. That's the most important thing. You have wonderful food to eat, all right? Now, I'm back in front again. All right. So, they use this word to imply the stupidity of a nation and a people. And then you speak that to all of us. I, I want to show you where this word is used in a sense in Torah, really one time. It's in the book of Sharach. Sharach. I want to show you what it says. Ah, yes, that's beautiful. This is how my mother will cook her steaks. And they will be so delicious. I'm going to begin to move this off. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. Where are my times? Oh, here they are. So what I'm going to do is begin to move these out. I'm going to put them in pants like this. You see that? I've got these kinds of pants. I'm going to take that off now. I simply wanted a charred look on them. And they're nice and charred, all right? So I'm going to move those out. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put one in each one of these containers. Look at this. You see this? I'm going to take this. And here is one here. You see that? See how beautiful that looks? For my friends, see how beautiful that is? Look at that state. Is that beautiful? And then I'm going to take, look what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this beautiful, beautiful raw butter. And then I'm going to put, ah, look at this. I'm going to take some of this butter. Okay. We, 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 we're going to refine this, this, all right. And I'm going to put a drop of butter on that. Does that look tough? Then what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to take the pan here with onions. See how beautiful that is? And I'm gonna put some onions here. Then the mushroom and the garlic. I'm gonna put some here, all around. Isn't that beautiful? Ah, uh, it's so lovely, all right? And then what I'm going to do from there, what I will do from there, I will take this one, and I'm going to wrap it like this. Uh, this is for a special friend. I'm going to wrap this like this. All right? Isn't that beautiful? You see that? And then I'm going to put his name on here so the daughters will give this one to the person 
for his city. I'm going to put his name here. I'm going to do him his name. Yahoo. You see that? That's Vak Yaakov. And then I'm going to take this pan. I'm going to sit it in here. See that? And then I'm going to put it here in the oven. Just like that. Put it in the oven. Now let me, and just wait until I do the other ones, all right? So I'll do the same thing here. I'll take one here. And uh, let me bring it here. I'm not proficient with this. I want to get back to that end word and finish that. I simply want to show you how I do it. I'm going to put one here. All right? We'll take the other one. I'm going to put one here. That is so beautiful, man. I tell you. I would love for someone to cook for me like that. All right? And I'll do the same process again. Put a little onions. See that? A little garlic and mushrooms. And on that, I will add a beautiful glob of Irish butter. See that? And then I will do the same thing. Get some aluminum foil. Then I will cover this. All right. This will be for a friend here. This will be for our Emma here, our oldest mother among us. Emma. Put her name there, Emma. See that? That's for our Emma here. Beautiful mother has stayed with me through all of my ignorance. She stayed with me. Hallelujah. All right. And then from there, we'll go back to the oven. I got to get things done because we'll eat here at three. So I can just set this in here like that. Let me clear this and reset this. Um, uh, I'll do it at 300. Start. You see that? All right, now I'm going to preach. We have one more. Here's one here. And I'm going to cut this, put a piece of butter on it. You see that? I'm going to put some onions. Here it is. You don't need to see me. Put some onions and some mushroom and garlic. Isn't that beautiful? It is to me. I will put a piece of foil over this. And then I will let this set in the oven. I will let this set in the oven. Okay. This is for our friend, his children. He can slice this. His children. All right. How about that? See that? And I'll sit this right in the oven here. And I'll do this until I'm finished. I'm going to cook, but let me preach some. All right, hallelujah. I got to wash some dishes right now. And that's how I do it to keep the process going. And you see me? Okay, let me clean this up. I don't like to use the same oil and uh, the same oil and uh, once I do two steaks, I can clean the pan up. Okay, that's how I do it. I let that one get a little too hot. So I'm going to wash this up right quick. I'm going to clean, clean this one up. 
Ah, uh, you see the preacher wash dishes. All right, but I'm going to do some dishes that are easy to do. Next time I'm going to do uh, the huge chicken wings. You'll see them, you will love that. Do two different kinds, the teriyaki and the uh, hot ones. They love hot things here. So I'm going to do that. Decent, decent cookware when you're cooking, all right? So what I'm going to do is start cooking. What I want to teach. Can you see me? Okay, let me see. All right, that will work. Let me get my oven back on. All right. I want to put just a smidget of olive oil in here. What did I do with that? Departmentalize. Here it is. I forgot to put a little parsley. I'm going to go without putting the uh, the uh, uh, the butter in. I'll put that in last. But look at this here. Th these are the aged ones I'm talking about. That's an aged steak. That's a horse. An aged steak there, okay? That's aged for five weeks. And this is going to be for Ach Yahoo here. I'm going to put this on for him. All right. Put a little bit of the uh, salt. Himalayan. What do you use salt? Use something like that, Himalayan salt. And then I'll put the pepper on. I'll put this pepper on here, right here. See that? These are the age ones. I, I want to do all these together. These are age ones. I'll put a little pepper and, and this Himalayan salt on each side. These are for our special friends. They're all special. You come. We will do you right. We know how to intrigue the people of God. Just don't come here with no foolishness. You that are trying to orchestrate a community, you need to come and see a real community. Your women cannot come here with pants on. And you with shorts on, man. You can't come here that way. I'm telling you that now. Dress appropriately. Women covering themselves and men as well. Now, your woman can come with pants on if you come with a dress on. Now, you see that all there is right now. And I want to put these in. I'm going to put these steaks in. I'm going to put all four of these in at one time. This pan will do it. See that? Now I'm back at the stove. See these? See what I got here? Just let them cook. I'm gonna move the camera again. I gotta get all this ready before dinner. Let me get back to that uh, katuv I said I was gonna read for you. It's in Shirak. This is what it says, I have it here. Shirak 31.22. The messenger, the teacher, so eloquently, he says, so uh, listen to me, this is what wisdom says, my son, my babe, and do not disregard wisdom, nation. He says, and in the end, you will appreciate my words, my discretion, my knowledge, my words, in all your work, be quick and industrious, do work, man. Y'all gave us that, uh, he gave us that healthy uh, outlet to work. By the sweat of our pony, you got these men of big guts, overweight, and everything. They look like hogs on the corners uh, and big old guts. Come on. Be industrious and no sickness uh, will overtake you, you don't have to worry about being sick and all. Uh, you have no ability to do things. He says, men will praise the one. Men will praise the one who liberally with food and their testimony to his excellence is trustworthy. In essence, you sit down to meal. Don't eat like a dog. Don't, don't 
Don't begin to grammatize. Eat with sensibility. And men will say, boy, that's a disciplined man. Look, he looks so fit. And same thing with you daughters of Zion. Don't overdo that. The food is not going anywhere. And then he goes on to say that death and their testimony to his excellence is trustworthy. They can say that man is industrious. Whether he works hard or works little, he eats the same. He's satisfied with the little or he's satisfied if he eats much. He is satisfied. This is what the book says. He goes on to say, the whole city shall murmur of the one that this is the only place who is niggerly, that's what it says, who is niggerly with food and their testimony to the niggerness of that statement is accurate. Then he goes on to say, do not aim to be valiant over wine. Don't get drunk. Don't just drink to destroy many. And that's what you have. You have those that say they're in the Hebrew camp and they drink wine and they drink whiskey and they do it on camera, off camera. I've seen it. That's not the will of God, my friend. And they will bless the women because of they're not dressed appropriately. They will do that. And they will take advantage of them, abuse them, use them, and they will certainly take that same one and make her a whore of his. Yes, they will. They will make them whores. Sure they will. And that's a fact. They will make those women whores. Listen to this, my friend. Listen. There's a word called Gila Gila. Kilia Kila. I will show you what it means in the Hebrew language. So when one calls someone black in the Hebrew language, or they notice in their color, uh, I mean, in, uh, this word, uh, they will not kill ya, kill you, kill you. This is the word, that's what the word I just read, niggerly. It means, it means niggerly, scoundrel. It means that one that is knave, dishonest, liar. That's what it means. So when you use a word of that degree, that you're saying that they are such a dishonest people, they are liars, they are corrupt, you don't even know them. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the struggles of that woman. You don't know her circumstances. You don't know she's been maligned, abused. You don't know that man. I have seen videos where they would literally be gone to rail at a woman because she was walking a certain way. Then the Torah tells you what to do. When you see a shapely woman, turn your head. You should not engage like that. And they will speak with utter disregard against those that, that are doing nothing to them. I can see if they were bothering you all, but they are doing nothing to you all. They don't say one thing. They keep going. You will malign them. You will speak with total degradation against them. You will speak with violent reproach. You will speak with such corruptness against those for what? They have done nothing to you. And that's wrong, man. I want to do a little more season. And so what they tell many people here, I want to read this. I'm going to season this a little bit, put some salt, some salt on this. They will say to them, well, what's wrong with using the N-word? And they will take this out of text here. Herein, they will take this out of text in the book of Acts. They will take it totally out of text with no respect. All right, let's get it done. They will take it totally out of text and say it's all right to call someone that. Don't call me that. Don't call me no guy. It's no different than the word guy than the, than the N-word, I'm telling you. And these are the people that say they do research. Listen what they use, they use. Now there was in the congregation there, Ox and the Ark, certain lobby in, prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Sinihon, he will call a Niger. Niger. He was not. The word come in its meaning from the Latin it is of its original origin, it is nigh, N-I-G, nigal, nigal, not what you say. 
It is nigal, which implies that that one skin was black. That's what it means, you all. Let nobody trick you. It means nigal, nigal, nigal. Look at these things. My, 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 my. If that is not something beautiful, I don't know what is. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. Look at that. Is that beautiful? That is just simply beautiful. Mm. We get it nice and charged. And then I will put it in the oven and let it tenderize even more. I got to get them done. And so they can bake for a while. Look at that. Is that beautiful? Hmm? Sure it is. You say what you want to. That is beautiful. Oh, my. These are the aged ones that I cook. And these age about five weeks. Let me get back to that, Yisrael. That's what the word, and it's lots of originality in the etymology of the word. It does not mean what these men say it means. They are wrong. The word Niger, uh, nega, nega, is the Greek enunciation. But the original Latin was not that nation. And it has a distinctive quality of enunciation when you pronounce that. You all need to stop, stop using that word against people. Listen to this. This is in Yeshai. This is how the word Hilai, Hilai, which is, which is niggerly, how it's used. It is this, Isaiah 50, 32, 5. The vile, which is the Nabal, the foolish and senseless fools. It says the Nabal, the vile, or the troll, it says that, uh, it says this, the vile person shall no more, shall no more be called liberal. Nor the troll says to be bound for me. And so when we see this word in, in Torah, it implies that someone that is vile and someone that is just full of foolishness and they're corrupt. They're clowns. And that's the fact of the matter. I'm going to take this off and get this, get this started. Hallelujah. So we cannot intrigue the people of Yah that we call our brothers and sisters. Why would we treat them like that? Why would we call them such a vile and ignorant word of no substance at all? It is corrupt. It is vile. It is a stench in the nostrils of Almighty Yah. So you can't come here talking that kind of language. I won't let you do it. And I'm, I'm known as one that I will tell you to leave the ground. And believe me, you will leave. I tell you to leave, you're going to leave. We're not going to tolerate it. We're not going to have that kind of insensitivity to a people that have suffered more than any nation. Why would you call them that? Why would you speak to them in that manner? Why would you say and reduce them to that kind of demeaning. I'm going to nation, I got to get this done. So look, I'm going to take these things and put them all in here. I know what these are. These are all of my age things. Ah, that is insane. Look at that. Just look at that. Is that not insane? You know it is. And I'm going to prep these and get them ready for my friends so we can eat. They can eat. I don't even know what they taste like. I cook all this stuff. I get the stuffed lamb last. I don't even know what it tastes like, but everyone told me it was so delicious. That's what they said. It was so delicious here. So I'm going to put this in the oven here. I'm going to stick this in the oven. Just let it sit there. And let it just bake. And I'm going to get busy. I have one, and I have another one of those beautiful pieces of the aged steak, and I got, what, five more to do. I'm going to put these all in here. Let me see. One, two, I got three.
three right there. And I want to get everything together for the people of Yah, my friends. We can enjoy this great and beautiful day. Listen, I'm going to stop this for now. I really don't know how to. But I'm going to start recording, and then when I get everything prepped and ready to go again, I will do a recording on that, okay? Stop disregarding each other. Much as we have opportunity, let us be at Shalom. Let us do right by all men, but especially of the house of Yisra How can you say you love them when you call them scoundrels and nothing of a dog? It's not so. It's not there, my friends. And this is Reyak Dawid Yisrael. I'm going to give you all a virtual tour through our community. We have a beautiful place. You can go to the park. We have a park here, a beautiful park, where we can sit, make a huge barn fire with tables. This is a beautiful place. We have a beautiful graveyard. We have an NBA-sized basketball court. We have a gym. We have a fellowship for the Achim. We have a beautiful place here. Let me see if I can get that for you. For the daughters of Zion, out of this window. Out of my kitchen window. Let me turn this. All right. You see that building over there? That's the Daughters of Zion's house. It's beautiful deck all the way around it. We have, you see that orange building to the left there? Playground for the children right there. But right here is a building. It's a building. You see that orange fence? That's a beautiful swimming pool in there for our babies that they can swim that they can swim, that they can swim and have a great time. The boys swim one day and the girls, and right there's a greenhouse, but we're gonna take you through a virtual tour. And as I said here, excuse me, as I said here, we're building what we call a tabernacle village. We see the sukkah, we're building the buildings like that. And we want to, y'all bless, and we have a huge tent there. Can you see the tent? There it is. You that are looking for a tent, you want to go to Kabila's. They sell some of the best tents. That tent will set you back around $1,500. But you can use this thing in Alaska. It will behoove you to get a tent in case you got to run and have some covering. So for now, my friends, look at the states. They're fine. I'm going to... I'm going to stop this video for the moment and so I can finish the meal, all right, for our people. I have two hours to get done. I want the steaks to be right. There are people that don't like the blood running out of their steak. So I want to do it in a way that it will be, a, you know, appetizing for them. So my friends, this is Reag Daiwit Yisraya until the next time we bid you yard speed and his great riches, your sure rest upon you all. This is our prayer to you, Yisrael. May he strengthen you, your daughters of Zion, your sons of strength. May his riches rest upon you all. In your sure's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.